Hello, welcome to MRM Highlights. Today we're covering the June 2019 editor's pick, which is titled Echoplanar Time Resolved Imaging, or EPTI, by Fuyi Shuye Wong and her co-authors from the Martina Center for Biomedical Imaging in Boston. We'll start with the audio slides and then have a brief Q&A with the lead and senior author. Hello everyone, my name is Fuyi Shuye Wang. I'm going to present a quick summary of a recent MRM paper entitled Echoplanar Time Resolved Imaging. The motivation of this work is to address the limitations of EPI by developing a new multi-shot EPI technique that takes advantage of the spatial and temporal correlation during EPI readout. So it could provide not only distortion blurring free imaging, but also hundreds of time resolved multi-contrast imaging across EPI readout with a TE increment of less than one millisecond. This allows fast quantitative mapping at 1.1 millimeter implant resolution in just 0.8 seconds per slice. We are achieving these by using a spatial and temporal cabbage trajectory that could sample the phase encoding and time space with high undersampling rates. Only several shots are needed here to sample the whole space, and each shot covers a KY segment using a zigzag trajectory that contains multiple diagonal KY line sections. The two temporally adjacent KY line sections are interleaved with complementary sampling in the phase encoding direction to allow better use of a coil sensitivity. They are also close in time for only a few milliseconds so that they have high temporal correlation. In addition, only small blips are needed to implement the sampling trajectory, therefore induce minimal echo spacing change and added current. Last but not least, it's robust to shot-to-shot B0 variations. Now that we've sampled the space, a B0-informed grappa reconstruction that we've previously developed will be performed to interpolate the missing data points. The kernel will take advantage of the spatial and temporal correlation that we have by using both the coil sensitivity and the temporal B0 phase information. This reconstruction will nicely fill out the KYT space. Then, by applying inverse Fourier transforms along phase and frequency encoding directions at each echo time, we can get more than a hundred of distortion and blurring free multi contrast images at 1 millisecond TE increment. This sampling allows high acquisition efficiency by using continuous readout to fill out any dead time in the sequence. In addition, a data-driven shot-to-shot B0 variation correction was also developed to remove the local smoothing effect on point spread function and therefore remain the sharpness of the image, even in cases with strong B0 inhomogeneity. We also extend EPTI to slice direction to take advantage of the coil sensitivity along Z by combining it with SMS, so we could achieve faster sampling for large volume. Now let's look at some results. First, we will evaluate the distortion levels. Now you're looking at distortion-free standard spin echo scan as the reference, single shot EPI and EPTI. We see that EPTI has identical brain boundaries to the ones extracted from distortion-free reference scan, whereas single shot EPI shows severe distortions with compressed structures. To show the time resolving capability of the EPTI, we acquired data using a 9 shot gradient and spin echo EPTI at 1.1 mm implant resolution within 27 seconds. This gives us 112 images, including both gradient and spin echo, providing signal evolution information at different echo time, as you can see in the movie. Looking at a lower slice at the bottom of the brain, where there's usually more distortions in the conventional EPI image, EPTI still works well and gives distortion-free images. The signal change in some through-slice defacing refacing area common in gradient echo shows that we can get an actual representation of the signal across gradient and spin echo time points as we expected. Next, we show that using EPTI signal evolution information, we can obtain quantitative measurements such as T2 and T2 star. We performed both phantom and in vivo experiments and successfully validated its ability to get accurate T2 and T2 star measurements in much shorter acquisition time. EPTI allows rapid quantitative mapping using a 48-fold accelerated gradient and spin echo SMS EPTI at 1.1 by 1.1 by 3 millimeter for whole brain coverage. 
One average of EPTI takes only 28 seconds, with an encoding rate of 0.8 seconds per slice. Here we are acquiring three averages to boost the SNR, resulting in a total acquisition of 84 seconds to get all these multi-contrast and quantum maps. We also extend our EPTI concept to 3D sampling for high-resolution quantitative imaging. We take advantage of both the coil sensitivity and subsys prior, which allows us to acquire whole brain data at 0.8 by 0.8 by 1.6 millimeter resolution in just one minute, providing 1,250 images across different TIs and different TEs, together with high-resolution quantitative maps. To summarize, EPTI provides distortion-free, time-resolved multi-contrast imaging at different echo times with high encoding and acquisition efficiency. It enables fast and high-quality anatomical, multi-contrast, and quantitative imaging, and should also prove useful to a number of other applications such as functional and diffusion imaging. Thanks for your attention. How are you, Chris? Pretty good. How are you guys? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Thanks for the thanks for the redo. Yeah, a little espresso. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're joined by lead author Fu Shui Wang and um, and senior author Calvin Setsumpop. Uh, first of all, thanks. Congratulations for this great work, and also thanks for taking the time to discuss it with us. Um, let me start with some uh, general questions. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your background, how you got interested in MRI, and uh, how this project evolved? I got interested in MRI when I was in college and I was exploring different research fields by taking lab rotations and taking different classes. And I was just fascinated by how flexible MRI can be in terms of acquisition, encoding, and contrast mechanism. And that also means uh, possibilities to you know, find new information to help with the uh, many uh, medical applications. So that's what got me interested. So I applied for graduate school and joined Cowan's lab. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so in Cowan's lab, we've been working on a lot of um, improving API technique to uh, push the limit of spatial and temporal resolution and uh, acquisition speed. So, you know, two years ago, we were working on this, uh, another multi-shot technique called Tilted Cappy, where we uh, use multi-shot to get distortion-free diffusion imaging by using an additional phase encoding direction. And that's when we realized that uh, instead of getting the principal function, what if we use a different sampling strategy and to take advantage of spatial temporal correlation across EPI readout, so we could really look into the information along echo time domain to mm -hmm. get hundreds of images with different contrast and with, to track the sigma evolution. So mm -hmm. that's how we started the project and my background. Yeah, so I'm gonna I want to get back to the the tilted grappa stuff in a minute, but uh, I also wanted to, to let you know that I thought the illustrations in your paper. And even the figures in your audio slides were exceptionally clear. Um, you know, do you have any tips for other authors or or aspiring authors that are watching the video on on how to make such clear illustrations or any processes you follow? Like when we're trying to uh, tell people our techno technique, and then we really want to make sure that there are a few key points that we want to illustrate. So. We design the experiments and get the result accordingly to like validate these points. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we want to show EPTI is able to provide distortion and blurring free images with multiple contrasts with accurate quantitative measurements. Mm -hmm. So we have um, it, for each of these points, we have a separate figure or slide to um, tell people, and so the readers will have a take-home message of what what we want to convey here. And, and also there's um, we, like, uh, we're constantly getting feedback from people, like just between Cowan and me, we have a, many rounds of back and forth. <laughs> and, and every round it was, there was improvements and um, yes. Yeah, it's a lot of complicated stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of pieces and she was able to tell us the same story. Mm -hmm. And it was important that she laid it out figure by figure. And I think mm -hmm. she did an excellent job at that. I think that's the key, right? Each figure tells one point and then you went through it. Yeah. Well, as a reader, I can tell you that the details were very much appreciated. You know, 
every the every key point you were trying to make was very clearly uh, shown. Um, so you mentioned some of the history of the project came from, you know, looking at KT space. And so I want to ask you about that a technical question. You know, the the tilted grappa in KYT space, you know, it's, it appears to be very powerful. Um, can you give some intuition for why this works, especially along the T-axis, uh, for all these scenarios, including gradient and spin echo? Uh, so we were doing encoding along uh, phase encoding and time. And a long time, there will be both phase accumulation and uh, signal decay. Mm -hmm. And that phase accumulation is due to B0 homogeneity. Mm -hmm. that can be well estimated by using coil sensitivity and using calibration data. So our grappa kernel was trained to contain this information and we make sure that the kernel is pretty small in a long time for several milliseconds so that it will have small B0 phase accumulation and signal decay that can be well estimated. And also we're using this complementary sampling along facing coding direction to take advantage of a coil better. So in summary is, um, you know, the complementary sampling, the small time distance, and also the B0 information uh, within the kernel that can allow us to achieve high acceleration. Uh, yeah, I think she, she said it pretty well. Um, I think it's pretty clear. I don't really have much to add to that. I think one point that I would add is, um, you know, if you think about it, it kind of goes back to smash theory. Mm -hmm. You're using coil and smash to create harmonics to jump along K, X or K, Y, K space. Mm -hmm. In this case, our observation is that the phase evolution, the difference between the different time points in a short TE mm -hmm. you know, during a few milliseconds is just B0 phase, which could be quite small. Mm -hmm. And you can use a similar theory on using coil to estimate that. So once we know that we can jump in these two directions, you can design the trajectory to be complementary in K and T mm -hmm. to allow to make the most use of it. So uh, I think we talked about this before, but I would imagine the performance characterization of a uh, sequence like EPTI is a major, major project. Can you tell us a bit about the tests you performed and if there were any interesting findings? We've um, done a lot of performance characterization and we've looked into um, its performance under different um, B0 levels on, with different acceleration factors with shot-to-shot -shot B0 variations. We also did analysis uh, on SNR and G factor. And one analysis that I wanted to like, highlight or um, emphasize here is that we also look into the temporal correlation and the level of data independency uh, along um, echo because we are using the shared information um, of the neighboring echo uh, data to reconstruct the target data. So it, it will allow us to achieve high acceleration factors, mm -hmm. but will also result in temporal correlation. So that's why we want to look into how much correlation that will you know, lead to. So we did a Mon, um, Mon Carlo simulation. And um, you know, like when we look at the correlation, you see that the correlation was pretty high uh, you know, at first, but drops really quickly after only three or four echoes with a full width at half maximum of only seven millisecond, which is co of comparable size of the kernel size a long time. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> the conclusion is that there is temporal correlation along echo time as expected, um, but it serve more, serves more like a t local temp temporal smoothing with a really short, uh, Time, time window, and there's still sufficient amount of data independency, uh, considering that we can get more than hundreds of echoes in each scan. Yeah, I think it's important to do all these characterization with new methods, so it doesn't appear like it's just magic, right? Um, I think that's part of the issue with this technique. It works so well that for people to really believe it's working and make sure that they want to use it, we need to run all these simulation and um, as well as characterization. Um, the correlation is an important issue. The um, shot to shot phase variation is an important mm -hmm. issue. And we've demonstrated that it works really well in those cases and yeah. we characterize it. 
So I was really happy with the work that she did on those things. Now, with, without Karen's, you know, guidance. <laughs> uh, last question I want to ask you, this could be open-ended. Um, the images really speak for themselves and they, they're, they appear to be distortion-free, exceptional resolution, and you get so many images. There's just so much um, rich potential information to mine. Um, and you articulate in your audio slides and in the paper many possible applications. Can you tell us a few about, uh, about a few that you're most excited about and in as much detail as you'd like to talk about? Yeah. Open-ended, open you know, what are you most excited about for applications? Yeah, you know, like I'm pretty excited about like we're, we're now extending EPTI concept to 3D sampling. Mm -hmm. So we could get high resolution, high SMR, and simultaneous T1, T2 to do star pointed mapping mm -hmm. in a very short time frame. And uh, we're, so in this 3D EPTI, we're not only taking advantage of the EPTI readout to mm -hmm. take advantage of spatial temporal correlation and coil sensitivity, but we're also taking advantage of the uh, low rank, the prior information of the low rank uh, signal model, and also the incoherence that we created using this radio blade sampling. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and with this approach, we by far we already get um, really good uh, quality data uh, with whole ring coverage uh, at 0.8 by 0.8 by 1.6 millimeter resolution uh, in just one minute with uh, T T1 and T2 star maps and uh, further optimization and will further you know make it better. And I'm also excited about the fMRI application using EPTI. Uh, we've already showed in the paper that for a preliminary, preliminary data set that we are uh, using gradient echo EPTI uh, in a visual stimulus uh, fMRI experiment where we get data at two by two by three millimeter resolution and with the three second temporal resolution. But for each TR, we get a, um, uh, more than 30 echoes for each TR. And using the multi echo data, we can enhance the you know, functional sensitivity. We can reduce the effects from uh, motion, spin history, and physiological noise by you know, uh, measuring the bold contrast uh, using T2 star uh, values. And uh, and also it's distortion and blurry free, so we can <laughs> look at how, you know areas with difficult areas with high susceptibility, and we are also looking into spin recently, spin echo data, uh, fMR using PTI, where we can get really good T two contrast, uh, without a lot of T two star weighting, as in the conventional uh, single shot spin echo. Yeah, and that would hopefully give us some more specificity in the contrast for fMRI to localize spatially as well. So I think what's exciting for me is that, um, you know, she did all this stuff and she's very excited to do all this stuff. And there's a lot of different project. Um, for a normal grad student, I would just say focus on one, but um, I'm letting her do all this stuff because I think she can do it and um, she'll bring a lot out in the next year. So hopefully there will be a lot to follow up. And um, I just want to say one thing about this project is that she's been a great student to make this work, but this is her idea. So I'll give her credit for that. This technique, she came, knocked on my door and I was like, oh, we did this um, PSF EPI with this tilted Kaiki method. Can can we do it differently? And you know, she came up with this and convinced me that we should try this out. And this is how the project got started. So, thanks, guys. Well, thank no problem. You. Thank you.